Hi to all. How are you feeling today? Are you ready for our next adventures? Ha, gitu. Okay, so uh, now I want to explain about uh, vertical curve. We know that there are two types of vertical curve. That is crest and also sag. There are two parameters that you need to calculate or determine. First is stopping side distance. Or in the formula, we call it S. And the S is a combination of two components, 0.28 VT, where V is the traveling speed in kilometer per hour, and T is the perception reaction time in second, and usually we take 2.5 second, plus the second component, which is the distance travel during braking, which V square minus u square which is the final speed over 254 multiplied by friction plus minus g so g in vertical alignment will turn into operation based on the gradient if the gradient is uphill then plus g if the gradient is downhill then you have to use negative okay for this case you have to calculate both either um, uphill or downhill to compare between two stopping side distance you will take the longest and normally the downhill will have the longer stopping side distance second we want to determine the length of the critical slope which is the L. We know that vertical curve has two types. The first one is crest. Crest, vertical alignment. Uh, the second one is sagging. Sag, vertical alignment. Yes, we calculate the stopping side distance. Now, we don't know what is the L because we want to calculate the critical slope length, which is L. Okay, for each type of vertical alignment, crest and sagging, there are two conditions where the first condition, if the side distance is greater than L. Second condition, if the S is less than L. Same goes to sag vertical curve. If the S is greater than L, which is the stopping side distance greater than the length of the critical slope, or S is smaller than L. So how to know either S greater or S smaller than the L? Special case for vertical alignment, first you have to calculate the SSD. Then we have to use the formula for each type. For example, for crest, you have to test in both case S if the S greater than L or S smaller than L. Let's say in first formula you get the value in meter. For example, the S is 200 meter. But then when you calculate the L using S greater than L formula, you get L for example 250 meter. 250 meter is greater than 200 meter. But then this formula if the S greater than L. So it does not comply the first condition. So then you have to test the second condition. Obviously you will get the answer. For example, Again, uh, the S is 200 meter. Using the second equation, if S smaller than L, then you get, for example, you get 270. Yes, you will not get the same answer as the previous because they used the different formula. So now it complied the condition. Nampak tak? This is 270, this is 200. So it comply the S smaller than L. So 270 meter is the L. Okay, this is just a brief overview so that you understand. For vertical curve, it is very special which we want to determine the length of the critical slope without knowing the condition. 
kita tak tahu condition dia yang mana satu. Dia besar ke dia kecil? The S is greater than L or S is smaller than L. So, we have to test by using the formula. Then, you make a comparison. Either the S is greater or smaller than L. Then, check the condition. If we use the S greater than L formula and it comply the condition, so that is the length of the curve. If does not comply, then you have to recalculate by using the next formula, which is S smaller than L. It is same goes to the sagging. It has two conditions where you don't know the length of the critical slope, but you have a two different formula where S greater than L and S smaller than L. So you have to test both. If it comply the condition, for example, again S200, then you get L, let's say 150. Yes. 200 is greater than 150. So, this is your final length. Critical slope length. Okay? If it does not comply, let's say, instead of 150, for example, you get 350. 350 is actually greater than 200. Does not comply the first condition. So, then you have to recalculate the L by using the second condition, which is smaller than L. Okay, so it is based on log. Either you get the answer at the first attempt or else you have to uh, recalculate by using the second formula. But bear in mind, you have to know the types of vertical alignment first. Either it is a crest vertical curve or set vertical curve. Then only you can calculate the length of critical slope. Okay. The length of the critical slope is L. So, I will show you after this what is L. So, let us look uh, into further detail about length of crest curve. As I mentioned earlier, there are two conditions. If S, stopping side distance, greater than L. So, the L is critical slope length. For S greater than L, this is the formula of the L. L minimum. L minimum means this is the minimum length of the crest curve. It should not lesser than this value or, or else it will affect the comfortability of road user or heavy vehicles for example. The L minimum for this condition where the S greater than L for crest vertical curve is equal to 2S 2 multiplied by stopping side distance minus 200 multiplied by square root of H1 plus square root of H2 square over A. So what is H1? H1 is high of I above road surface, which is normally 1.07 meter or 3.5 feet. So this is the height of driver I above the road surface while driving. H2 is height of object above road surface. It's equal to 0.15 meter or 0.5 feet. Satu pembaris pendek. Okay, the object H2. And S is the side distance. This is how we interpret the condition where the S greater than L for the crest curve. This is the crest curve which connect positive gradient which is positive G1 and negative gradient, negative G2. So, the height of driver I is H1. This is H1 and the height of object H2. This is H2. So this is the driver. For example, this is the point where the driver located at. He or she still can see the object here. Okay, the object here. So from here to here, that is stopping side distance. That's mean. That is the side the driver can see. Is there any obstacle 
at this particular section or area so the driver can still make any action okay well the l for this curve is here from here to here this is a simplified diagram okay the simplified diagram to show when the s is greater than l okay when the s is greater than l and the angle here a is modulus that's mean we neglect all the sign positive or negative g1 plus g2 and we just simply add the value in percent for example the g1 is equal to 2 percent and g2 equal to 2 percent so we just add 2 plus 2 then we get 4 just add the number by neglecting all the sign positive or negative so g1 plus g2 let's say the g1 equal to 5 percent and the g2 equal to 4 percent then 5 plus 4 equal to 9 so the a equal to 9 then you put 9 as a a in this formula okay this is quite complicated so we come up with simplified formula so l minimum for the s greater than l equal to 2s minus 4 or 4 over a this is the simplified one because we already put this value height of driver i and the height of object into the formula then we get 4 or 4 okay so this is the first condition when the s is greater than l while for s smaller than l this is the formula l minimum equal to a multiplied by s square a is the summation of angle by neglecting all the sign multiplied by stopping side distance square over 200 multiplied by square root of h1 plus square root of h2 square again the h1 equal to height of i above root surface which is 1.07 meter or 3.5 feet h2 is height of the object above root surface which is 0.15 meter or 0.5 feet and the s is side distance this is how we interpret the condition when the s is smaller than l so let's say this is the s and this is the l it is a crest vertical curve connecting g1 and g2 so when you travel on the crest vertical curve when you reach this point which is your height of the driver eye is on here then only you can see the object at here which is h2 is the height of the object that means you have to travel along the vertical curve until certain point then only you can see any object beyond the summit curve so that is the definition of when the side distance is smaller than the l simplified formula when we substitute h1 and h2 we get l minimum equal to a multiplied by s square over 400 and Four. This is the clearer view of crest vertical curve when the S is smaller than L. Let's say you are here. Okay, you are here. You can't see any object beyond the summit curve. Tak nampak. So that is indicate the side distance is smaller than L. You have to travel along the crest vertical curve maybe until you reach this point then only you can see the object beyond the summit curve okay so when you travel oh up until the summit curve then only you can see what is the object but when you move beyond the summit curve we can't see you anymore because i am here i am here you are in the car so bye ha huh, gitu okay so the car or any object beyond the summit curve we can't see so that is when the s is smaller than l it is dangerous actually especially if we look into this picture from here we can see that oh it is a straight road it just looks like a straight road because this is the summit curve summit curve and there is a sagging probably there 
Self critical curve. Whoa! There is a horizontal alignment beyond the summit curve. It's dangerous. That is why be careful when you travel at a crest or sagging because we can't expect any obstacle ahead. So be careful. Let us look into uh, this example. A crest vertical curve is to be designed to join a positive 3% grade with a negative 3% grade at a section of a two-lane highway. That means one lane per direction. Determine the minimum length of the curve if the design speed of the highway is 80 km per hour and S smaller than L. So in this example, the condition is given. So you can just use the formula for crest vertical curve when the S smaller than L. No need to do a try and error. Okay. Assume that the perception reaction time is 2.5 seconds and the friction is 0 0.5. So, how to solve the problem? First, you have to calculate stopping side distance. Okay, why we use negative? Because, rule of thumb, we need longer distance to stop safely when we travel downhill as compared to uphill. Actually, you have to calculate both using positive and negative, then you take the longest. Obviously, you can try. You can try right now. If uh, positive and negative, which one is longer? Obviously, you will get the negative, the longest stopping side distance. So, just substitute all the information into the formula. Then, we get the stopping side distance equal to 149.3 meter. Okay. Kalau tak puas hati, cuba kira untuk tambah. Okay. Positive uh, G. You will get less than 149.3. If you confuse, then calculate je dua-dua. Just calculate both, then compare. Take the longest as the SSD because the longest is the safest. Because the condition is given, so we know that um, the S is smaller than L. So just use the simplified formula. Then we get 6 S. DA, which 3 plus 3, neglect the sign, just take the number, multiply by the SSD square over 404, then we get 331 meter is the minimum critical slope length for this curve.